Google Pixel 4 is coming out, well, this month. This will be one of the best smartphones you get in 2019, and it might have the best camera and smartphone for 2019, alongside some very, very unique new features. Personally, I'm very excited for the Pixel 4. So yeah, welcome to the Zenov Techniques and Rumors series, the longest running series on the channel. So here is everything you need to know about a Pixel 4. This video contains not one, not two, but actually eight different sections. Design, display, camera performance, special features, battery, release date, and price. So yeah, you'll definitely need some popcorn and some drinks for this one. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Here's everything in terms of the Pixel 4. Okay, so starting off with the design, uh, Pixel phones were mostly known for three things. The first one was that amazing camera, the second one was that pure stock Android experience with no bloatware and they want updates, and then the third one was um, the not so pretty design. The Pixel 1 looked like an iPhone with no home button, however it did have on-screen buttons which made the bezels horrendously thick. Then the Pixel 2, which was released in 2017, already had an outdated design when compared to, you know, the competition, the Galaxy S8 and the iPhone 10. Then the Pixel 3 from 2018 had that famous notch, which was even bigger and more noticeable than the one on the iPhone 10, while at the same time lacking any 3D depth sensing technology or face unlock like the iPhones had. And now the Pixel 4 will have yet another questionable design. And this is the design of the Pixel 4. Yes, Google has tweeted this and even posted a few teasers. We got so many leaked videos of this. No, really, the Pixel 4 has actually been the most leaked phone ever. Leaked because quite a few of those were teasers which were made on purpose. But there we go, this is the final design of the Google Pixel 4. So right off the bat, you can see that the front of the Pixel 4 no longer has that notch. Uh, instead, we have a fairly noticeable forehead that resembles the one that we had on the Pixel 2 XL back in 2017. But this year, Google is actually packing some serious tech inside that forehead, uh, which I'll cover pretty soon. So it's not just there without any purpose, it does have a lot of purposes. And like I said, you'll see what I mean in just a second. The side bezels are fairly thin, they do look uh, to be about the same thickness as the ones on the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pro Max, and finally the bottom chin does appear to be thicker than on most phones today, but this one might also have its own purpose. Moving on to the back, there are probably a few things that you'll notice right away. First, we no longer have that iconic dual tone look that Pixel phones were known for, instead we have a single colored glass, which again is said to be made out of the same frosted material that the Pixel 3 had and that the iPhone 11 Pros now have. And the leaked colors at least are black, orange, and white. Uh, Google even had a massive Times Square poster teasing the Pixel 4, and this one was the orange model, so orange is definitely confirmed at this point. Evan Blast Eve Leaks also confirmed these colors, with their names apparently being just black, clearly white, and oh, so orange. You gotta love Google's names, like honestly Google has some really unique and awesome names. And something that you might have noticed is that even though we no longer have the dual tone look, we do have a black frame on the white and the orange models. So in that case we still kind of get the dual tone look uh, to some extent, which I do really like. It reminds me of having a bumper case on the old iPhones. It's got that look, which I think looks quite, quite neat. And finally, probably the most noticeable thing on the back is that camera module which now looks way, way different to how it used to look like on previous Pixels. It looks very similar to the iPhone 11 Pro's module, the only difference uh, being that it's black on the inside rather than matching the color of the back of the phone like it does on the iPhone. So yeah, in a way, it does look very similar to the camera module uh, that we had on the iPhone 11 Pro mock-ups, if you remember those from, you know, the previous videos. It's not a triple lens camera module, unfortunately, it's just a dual one, but I'll be covering all of that and more in the camera section of this video, so stay tuned for that. Also, the fingerprint reader on the back is now gone, and it has now been replaced by something even better. So the back has quite a clean look, and overall I do think that Google's moving into the right direction when it comes to the design. And yes, I know it's not as sleek as the S10 or the OnePlus 7 and the 7T Pro, but it will at least come with some very unique features, which I'll cover in just a second. So moving on to the display, the Pixel 4, same as with the 3, the 2, and the 1, will come in two models. Uh, the regular Pixel 4, which will come with a 5.7 inch Full HD Plus display at 2160 by 1080 p resolution and 424 ppi, and then the Pixel 4 XL, which will come with a 6.3 inch Quad HD Plus panel, so a 3040 by 1440 resolution at 534 ppi. These will both be OLED panels with Gorilla Glass 6, HDR support, 100% DCI-P3 coverage, uh, so they will be very good panels, and they will also feature something quite unique and special and that is a 90Hz refresh rate panel. Yes, a high refresh rate display such as this one is something that we already have on phones such as the OnePlus 7 Pro, uh, the 7Ts, the ASOS RG gaming phones, the Razer phones, so more and more manufacturers are adding a high refresh rate displays to their phones, 
and um, yeah, the Pixel 4 will be one of those phones. What this means is that all the animations would be 50% more fluid than on a regular smartphone, which has a 60 hertz refresh rate panel. You know, your laptop, your computer, your monitor, your TV, most of them have 60 hertz. So yeah, the Pixel 4 will be more fluid than all of those. Moving on to the camera, Pixel phones have always had a stunning camera. But you see, the thing here is that the camera itself, the hardware, was never anything groundbreaking. Instead, Google's machine learning has been by far the best one in the industry, and they've been able to deliver some amazing results. However, like I said before, Google has always been behind in terms of the camera hardware. While all the other manufacturers have had dual and even triple and even quad camera modules, Google has only had one single module. In 2018 with the Pixel 3, we actually got a dual front-facing camera module, which was one of the first ones in the industry. Uh, we had a wide-angle lens for group selfies, which was really good and really useful to have. However, just, you know, one camera module on the back. And this year, we are getting a dual camera module indeed, which also means that Google will still be one year behind the competition. So smartphones in 2017 and 2018 got that second camera module, uh, which was a telephoto or a zoom module, while in 2019 they got that wide-angle module. And unfortunately, according to all the leaks that we've seen, the second module on the Pixel 4 will actually be a zoom module rather than the wide-angle module, uh, which is pretty disappointing to be honest. You can always zoom in digitally, but you cannot take a wide-angle shot without a wide-angle lens. And here's the thing, Google already has a very good digital zoom. So they call this thing Super Res Zoom, and while it's nowhere near the quality of an actual zoom module, uh, it's very, very close, like surprisingly close. Uh, this is why I personally don't, don't believe that a second module will be a zoom module. I still have hopes for this being a wide-angle module and the leaks being fake. But yeah, unfortunately, all the leaks, every single one of them have pointed towards this module being a zoom module, unfortunately. Now, speaking of modules, it seems like we would not be getting a dual camera module on the front anymore with a Pixel 4. At least not according to the official images that Google itself posted of the Pixel 4 and all the sensors that they have on the front. And as you can see from this one, we only have one camera module on the front. And I'll talk about all the other sensors that we can see here in this image in a special feature section of this video. However, this is expected to be a wide angle lens or an ultra wide as everyone's calling it now, uh, which means that Google will probably take all photos zoomed in digitally at a lower resolution and then zoom out for that wider field of view when you need to. So yeah, pretty much a similar technique to what Apple is now using uh, on the iPhone 11s. Now, in terms of the camera specs, the selfie camera is reported to be an 8 megapixel sensor, f2.0 aperture with 1080p video recording at 30 frames per second. Um, now, I do believe that this will be upgraded in some way because this is such a big downgrade from the 4K 60 that we have on the iPhone 11s, for example. So that's a huge difference, 4K 60 versus 1080p 30. And then the back-facing camera is reported to be a 12.2 megapixel sensor with an f1.6 aperture, uh, same one over 2.55 inch sensor like we had before in the Pixel 3. However, with that f1.6 aperture from the f1.8 that we have now in the Pixel 3, we would be getting more light into the sensor, which in turn will mean better low-light photography. Video recording with a back-facing camera will finally be bumped to 4K 60, as the Pixel 3 could only do 4K 30. And uh, we've had 4K 60 on phones since, um, yeah, 2017 with the iPhone 8. Now, the Pixel 4's camera will actually have two brand new features. The first one being called the Pixel Neural Core, which is essentially the next generation of the Pixel Visual Core that we had in the Pixel 3. This was the imaging chip responsible for processing the data required for the nightside photography. And second, speaking of nightside, probably the most impressive camera feature for me at least, is the brand new astral photography mode, which seems to be an even more improved version of night sight. This was first seen in a leaked Pixel 4 TV ad, Yes, even that got leaked. And speaking of leaks, we now have full resolution images, leaked images, sample photos from the actual Pixel 4, thanks to 95 Google and The Verge. So uh, yeah, here they are, actual images from the Pixel 4. Uh, and yes, I can definitely say that they are definitely coming from a Pixel phone. I can tell that by looking at the portrait mode shots, uh, where the subjects are clearly separated from the background, so they look as if they were added in post in Photoshop. And wow, take a look at this shot, the portrait mode separation, and this dog shot looks amazing. There's some very good separation. Uh, the image becomes blurrier the further away you get from the lens. So really impressive in this case. Yeah, that second camera module is definitely helping make the portrait mode look even more realistic. There's also a few night side shots that look very good and they all got that pixel look where the colors are quite vibrant and cool versus the warmer tint that we get with Samsung phones and iPhones. We also have a few sample images of the astrophotography mode uh, and they look mind blowing. I mean, wow, I cannot believe that these were taken on a phone. 
And then we also have some leaked macro shots, which just look stunning. I mean, look at that detail. And then we also have samples of food, uh, which seems to be very sharp and very color accurate. So yeah, definitely subscribe and enable notifications for the full zone of the camera comparison. We'll have one as soon as the Pixel 4 gets released. It would be very similar to our last camera comparison. So yeah, close to 30 individual test categories with even more actual tests in those. Okay, now when it comes to the performance, Pixel phones have never been that impressive. I mean, sure, they were smooth and fluid and they got day one updates, but raw performance wise, uh, they were quite weak when compared to the competition. This is because Pixel phones get released in October and they are actually one of the last phones to release in the year. And Qualcomm announced a new processor in December, so Pixel phones only get two months until they are already outdated. And then aside from the CPU, Pixel phones were also lacking in terms of the RAM. So the Pixel 3s only got 4GB of RAM, which for an iPhone that would seem quite normal, but for an Android phone, 4GB of RAM is usually what you would find on low-end handsets. Google says that they don't need more RAM because they optimize their pixels very well, which unfortunately hasn't really been the case. There were lots of complaints with the RAM management on the Pixel 2 and especially the Pixel 3, uh, which Google could easily fix by just adding, you know, more RAM in the Pixel 4. And they will, it's just that... Uh, the leak suggests a bump to 6 gigabytes of RAM from 4. And yeah, even 6 gigabytes of RAM isn't that much. Like today we have Android smartphones that come with 12 gigabytes of RAM and many, many more that come with 8 gigabytes as standard. So yeah, even 6 gigabytes would be slightly outdated. Now in terms of the CPU, the Pixel 4 will come with a Snapdragon 855 Plus. Now, interesting enough, this is a fairly new processor. So it was launched back in August. However, it is just an overclocked 855 and not anything new like the 865 will be, which will be announced around December. Still, the 855 Plus is a very good processor and a pretty big jump from the 845 that the Pixel 3 had. Okay, so aside from the camera upgrades and the performance improvements, what are the features that make the Pixel 4 unique? And the good news is that this is where we actually get the biggest improvements. First, we get the brand new Soli or Soli chip. So this is essentially a miniaturized radar that can detect and measure movement much better than an actual camera can. Uh, Google had a special team just working on the Soli chip. Essentially what it does is that it will allow you to control your Pixel 4 using air gestures. Now, if you've been following the tech industry for a few years now, you know that this isn't anything new, really. We've had this with the Galaxy S4 back in the day, uh, LG phones as well, so it's nothing really new, and in my opinion, it is mostly a gimmick. I mean, yes, you'll be able to just wave at your Pixel to stop an alarm or skip to the next song, but I still find this to be a gimmick. However, the good news is that it will actually work in conjunction with other sensors in that forehead to enable the second big new feature on the Pixel 4, which is face unlock. Yes, just like we have on the iPhone 10 and newer, the Pixel 4 will have full 3D depth sensing camera on the front. Uh, and really, aside from Apple, Huawei, and now Google, there are no other smartphone manufacturers using this technology, mostly because it's, it's quite expensive. However, Google's face unlock might even be better than Apple's. Thanks to that Soli Raider chip, the Pixel 4 actually lights up the display as soon as it sees uh, that you're approaching the Pixel and unlocks the phone. How cool is that? This will make it so much faster than Apple's approach where you have to lift the phone or tap on the display uh, for the display to even light up, and only then the Face ID camera will actually scan your face and unlock the phone. Also, if you take a look at the entire list of sensors that Google has inside that forehead, they're actually using two face unlock infrared cameras rather than just one like Apple does. Yeah, this is interesting. It might mean that Google will be using those for even better 3D depth mapping or even faster and more secure face unlock. Then the third new feature will be UFS 3.0 storage. So just like the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, the Pixel 4 will have the fastest storage on the market with read speeds of just over one gigabyte per second. So yeah, really impressive, really impressive having this on a smartphone. And this goes really, really well with a 90 Hertz refresh rate panel. And then the fourth new feature is eight times zoom with a back facing camera. We've actually seen hands-on videos with the final retail unit of the Pixel 4. So uh, yeah, this phone has been leaked like crazy and yes, yeah, it seems like it will unfortunately have a telephoto module rather than that ultra wide module that everyone has been, you know, wishing for. And that eight times zoom would actually be digital instead of optical. But hey, at least uh, at least it's there. But yeah, this is pretty much it in terms of brand new special features. Of course, that will have all the ones from the Pixel 3 and before, such as, for example, those dual stereo speakers, which should sound amazing once again. Now, in terms of the battery, this is reported to be uh, 2,800 million powers on the Pixel 4 and 3,700 million powers on the Pixel 4 XL. Now, interesting enough, this is actually a downgrade on the Pixel 4 from the 2915 that we had on the Pixel 3. However, it's an upgrade on the Pixel 4 XL uh, from the 3430 that we had on a Pixel 3 XL. Yeah, unfortunately, we have no updates on fast charging if this is going to be improved in any way. Now, when it comes to the release date, the actual Pixel 4 event is happening on October the 15th, 
2019, which is actually next week. So this is when Google will unveil the Pixel 4, the new Pixel Buds, and possibly even some brand new Google Home products as well. Now, in terms of when the Pixel 4 would actually be released, this should be on the 15th, so same day. So usually it's about a week or two after the unveil, but considering the amount of leaks that we've had, including you know people making videos with the actual retail unit of the Pixel months before the release, well, it seems to me like Google already has the Pixel 4s ready to ship. Now, price-wise, we've only had one single leak coming from a website called Lara, and this leak was discovered by 95 Google. And according to that leak, the prices for the Pixel 4s would be uh, 820 euros for the 4 and 1126 for the XL. So that's a lot. Yeah, that's an increase from last year's Pixel 3s. And honestly, I wouldn't really be surprised if that's really the case because the Solar Raider chip and face unlock, those are some really expensive components and they will increase the manufacturing cost of the Pixel 4 by quite a bit. But then at the same time, Google didn't really sell a lot of Pixel 3s, so they really shouldn't be increasing the price. Also, we've had a leaked listing of what we get inside the box posted by 9to5Google. And here it seems like we get, you know, the phone, of course, uh, USB Type-C to USB Type-C charging cable, the power adapter, which seems to be the exact same 18 watt charger that we get with a Pixel 3, the SIM eject tool and the quick start guide. So yeah, another headphones, once again, another reason why Google should drop the price. Like, you know, all the other smartphones at this price point, they do include headphones and even more accessories, especially when you take a look at Samsung. Okay, so in the end, what do I think about the Pixel 4? Well, it's not out just yet, so I'll reserve my final thoughts until, you know, I actually get it and, you know, see it. But based on all the leaks that I've seen, uh, it's going to be a very strong phone. Basically, a OnePlus 7T Pro with a much worse design, but with face unlock, air gestures, and a much better camera, and an even more stock OS, and they want updates as well. Literally, they want updates. It won't be the prettiest, but it might just be the best Android phone of 2019. So yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts on the Pixel 4 and the 4XL. Uh, definitely subscribe to notifications if you want to see more Leaks Numbers episodes and more in-depth tech videos like this one, hopefully was. And yeah, don't forget to check out our website for articles on interesting stuff. And this has been pretty much it. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Is that a fact? Signing out. Cheers.